Hey there, we are going to talk some more about quantifiers. Um, we're going to kind of show something interesting about the existential quantifier and just this short little proof. Um, basically, we're trying to prove there exists an x, there exists a y such that pxy is the same thing as there exists a y, there exists an x such that pxy. And actually, it might be better to say there exists at least one x there exists at least one y because this doesn't mean there's only one it just means there's at least one all right so first thing we want to do is we want to start making some substitutions and remember when you do that for a uh, an existential quantifier you gotta it's it's good form um actually i haven't gone over this yet when you substitute for a uni an existential quantifier it's it's usually best at least from how I've learned it it's pretty explicit when you enter into a sub proof so I would go there exists a y such that p c y because I'm gonna say um, that I did an existential elimination um, of line one and I substituted c for x so two things the sub proof is not really it's not mandatory in formal logic at all. Uh, I just think it adds a little bit of clarity. This is the way I've been taught to do it. Um, you know, it's really up to you. Uh, and then here, this is also not at all required. It's just, again, really clear what's going on. You're saying, you know, I'm assuming that this x is c and I'm changing c for x. There's just no ambiguity here at this point. So we do that bring that down and again you know this is just the way that I've been taught to do it so that's how I'm showing it then we're gonna enter another sub proof because we're gonna go P C D and that's another existential elimination of line 2 this time and we're putting in D for Y so now what we want to start doing is we want to flip this ordering. So something cool we can do here is now we can actually say there exists an x such that pxd. That's going to be an existential um, initialization. Or another rumor we can also say uh, an existential instantiation. Um, and this would be an existential generalization. But like I said in one of my previous videos, I kind of prefer using the symbol. It's just a little easier to read for, for me at least. Uh, so it's going to be line three. And that is putting x in for c. Then we're going to do that y such that p, x, and y. And that's it. That's our existential initialization, line 4, y, 4, d. Put our little box there. So yeah, what this was kind of showing is basically that um, existential x, existential y of some function that takes x and y as arguments is logically equivalent to existential y, existential x, uh, p, x, y. Make sure it all looks good. Yeah, so this is something that can be pretty useful to know is that these are the same. Thanks for watching.